a cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Welcome back, Jeff Frick here on theCUBE. We're at EMC World 2014, the fifth year of theCUBE being at EMC World, and something special this year, we actually have two concurrent CUBEs going on side by side. So we invite you to stop by, hopefully say hello. We're right next to this beautiful uh, video wall and the alumni lounge and the social lounge and the big stage next door. So come on by theCUBE and see not one, but two. Double the pleasure, double the insight. <laughs> so for our next segment, we're going to keep diving into uh, VMAX, right? V-Specs. How about V-Specs? V -Specs We're going to go to yeah. V-Specs. So I'll kick it over to my associate here, Stu Miniman. Yeah, thanks Jeff. Of course, uh, EMC for many years, everything started with a V and ended in X. Yeah. Uh, oh. But you know, they, they, they've, had, they've, they've kind of moved, moved beyond that. But uh, we've been talking about V-Specs, talking about convergence, talking about moving up to the applications, orchestration, you know, the yep. whole kit and caboodle. And joining us for this segment is uh, Chad Dunn. Uh, Chad's Senior Director of V-Specs Business Operations. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chad, thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so so uh, you know you've been involved in VSpecs for a while, and uh, you know there, there, there's a lot of updates uh, that are going yeah. on. And of course, uh, you know VSpecs is a collection, uh, you know pulls from you know the Federation and especially from the EMC product right. lines. And you know Jeremy Burton, of course, made sure that there was lots and lots of news uh, yeah. to dig into. So can you give us you know what what do the announcements at EMC World mean to the VSpecs line? Sure. Uh, well, the big announcements that we we've had this week is we've updated 11 of the reference architectures to now include the VNXE 3200, right? So that's the next generation of our VNXE low-end mid-range products. And uh, so all of the, the Microsoft private cloud solutions, the VMware solutions, the application solutions, all updated to use the VNX 30, VNXE 3200 now. Uh, also, we've uh, brought the data domain 2200, which was just announced today. That's also in the reference architectures as well. So we've refreshed our, our data protection portfolio at the same time. Okay. Yeah, so can, can you give us an update? Uh, you know, what, what's, what's the mix look like uh, on in, in VSpecs? I know you can do, you know, you know VNX and VMAX, you can yep. do Cisco and Brocade, you can do, yep. you know, Microsoft and VMware. What, yep. what, what, what's a typical-ish configuration? You know, what are kind of some, some of the, uh, okay. what, what, what's the breakdown? Uh, well, what a typical configuration looks like to me, if I, if I look across all the different solutions that we sell and what tends to be moving at the highest volume, you know, it, it's configurations that are in sort of that VNX 5400 sort of size from a storage footprint perspective. Um, and it's usually on the order of, you know, four to six servers, whether they're blades or, or rack mount. Um, you know, redundant network switches, of course, and um, VMware virtualization seems to be the, the dominant player for, from that perspective. Uh, and about 25% uh, of the time, there's also backup included in those solutions as well. A lot of times as people deploy these in green fields, or are updating from older infrastructure, they want to do backup at the same time, so they have all of that in one pane of glass in the new infrastructure. So that's typically what these solutions uh, look like on average. But then we have outliers. You know, we do have other very high-end configurations that we see that aren't as common. So we see things up on the uh, 5800 line that are yeah, could run into the millions of dollars from an ASP perspective. So it's really all over the place. Okay, and, and from your, your partner standpoint, you know, let, let's talk about the network for a second. Yep. You know, how much fiber channel, how much Ethernet? Predominantly Ethernet today, right? Because uh, you know, really playing in the mid-market space, and up until now, up until the VNX E3200, that was an Ethernet-only product, right? So now it has fiber channel front end as well, uh, which has been a surprisingly strong request from our partner and our customer base, uh, particularly in APJ, where fiber channel is, is alive and well and a really sought after feature. So, um, predominantly Ethernet in the low end today, but we expect to see a lot more fiber channel with the 3200. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. Brocade's got a big presence at EMC they World do. always. I, I'm sure they're happy to hear that that, happy to hear that, that. growth's going on. Of course, they, they, they play across both the, the fiber channel and Ethernet. Mm -hmm. Ethernet, is, does Cisco dominate that space like they do in the market overall, or do you see a good mix out there? Um, they're certainly the dominant player that we see from an Ethernet attached perspective. Uh, it may not be as dominant as the as the market share suggests, um, but you know it's it's either uh, typically Cisco 
or brocade in our IP configurations that we see. Yeah, it, it, it's funny. I mean, Chad, you and I go back to some of the you know protocol wars that you said. Yeah. You know, oh, it's you know you know fiber channel. You know, is is, is you know the solution for storage. Right. Uh, no, wait, iSCSI is going to be good, or we yeah. should go block. We should go file. Um, one of the things I found with converge solutions is you know protocol wars should be dead. You know, it the, the solution should just simplify the solution. My my reseller and my solution. Uh, you know, my, my environment dictates what it should be. Right. Um, and then, you know, it, it's just some of the guts inside that I might have checked when I set it up and I might have to tweak right. it if it breaks, but you know, yeah. what, is it true? Is, are protocols, you know, just part of the plumbing now? Well, they're, they're moving in that direction and now the, the real differentiator is going to be how those hardware devices are going to interact with software-defined networking things like NSX, like, uh, like Cisco's NCME uh, product. So, the, the pipes are becoming you know, less and less important and I think those protocol wars are, are by and large behind us. Okay, so uh, do, is SDN part of the story with VSpecs now? Uh, stay tuned, you know, obviously <laughs> uh, we, you know, we have a pretty strong SDN play with VMware and their NSX product and so we certainly want to be able to leverage that where it's needed, right? We don't really see it as much in the mid-market yet. That's still a fairly high-end solution for very particular use cases but we expect that to come down pretty rapidly. Yeah, and, and I mean, there obviously is the virtual layer where I need to worry about the switching right. there, but for the most part, I'm, as a converged solution, I'm an end node, and most of the network happens outside of my box regardless of what I choose, correct? Yeah, that's the typical case, the typical case. Most of what we sell in VSpecs from a volume perspective, we see going into, into green fields in, uh, you, know, you know, two, three racks worth of, worth of equipment in these deals. Okay, uh, the, the, the other announcement recently that I think we want to dig into is a little bit of support. Can you, you tell me, yeah. you, know, uh, the, you know, the progression of what a VSpec support uh, looks like? Yeah, we, uh, originally when we launched VSpecs, we didn't do anything special for customer support for these configurations. So we would certainly honor the cooperative support agreements we have with, with the other vendors that are, are part of the ecosystem, but that, that was really it. And time and again, every partner meeting that I ever went to, you know, single point of support had to be there. We need single point of support. And so, you know, exhausting all other options, we did the right thing, and we actually implemented it. All right, so now, if you have a problem with your VSpec solution, whether it's compute, network, virtualization, storage, you can call EMC first. If we can determine that the, the responsibility or the issue is with another vendor software, we will work with you and open that call ticket on your behalf with that vendor assuming you have the, the support entitlements to do so. And EMC will stay with you through the, the whole process until it's resolved. So regardless of what you think the problem is, you call EMC first and we'll take care of it. Okay, so I mean, that had to have added a little bit of overhead to, uh, you know, your, your team is, uh, can, can, what, was there headcount added to support this or? There, there was, there's, there's a whole new team inside Global Services whose responsibility is solution support uh, for VSpecs. And that team, I believe, is, is 16 people strong right now and, and continuing to grow. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, it certainly adds cost, it adds overhead to what we do, but we're in a solutions world now. We're selling solutions, our, our partners go to market that way. We need to support these things like solutions, not as discrete products. So uh, if one of the uh, add-on pieces, like through the VSpecs lab uh, certified, right. like we had Vistara on, do you guys right. offer single support for that or is it limited to the compute? No, they can they can absolutely call us with a Vistara issue. We have collaborative support agreements in place with Vistara so we can open calls on the customer's behalf. Okay. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you're going to be in the solutions business, you got to be in the solutions business, right? Exactly, it can't be a solution <laughs> up until the point where you actually sell it and then Right. And it, then it, it breaks it and they want help, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not my part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Chad, you know, it, it, it was uh, pr pretty striking in the keynote this morning that you know EMC with both the, the VCE and the VSpec solution have yeah. you know really really strong market share out there. Absolutely. One of the observations that we, we've made on the marketplace is um, while almost every vendor out there has converge solutions, right. EMC really leads with those solutions and yes. has you know, worked with the channel to help you know, train them, educate them, and push them. Yes. Um, do you, when you, you're out competing in the marketplace, um, do you find you that still that you're the ones leading the conversation on converges, then they kind of step up to it? Or are you still competing against uh, you know, built uh, solutions? Or you know, what, what's, the, what's the competitive no, landscape I, look like? I, I really feel like we're, we're leading with that solution selling message because it's, it's one thing to build a converged infrastructure thing that looks and feels like a product, but if your partners don't have the ability to 
go out and sell uh, and transact and support like a solution, you're, you're not going to get anywhere. And the reason that I think we've been so successful with VSpecs is, you know, one, we believe they're superior products. Um, I wouldn't work at EMC if I didn't believe that, but what we also do is we add value to our partners in the reference architectures and the go-to-market program, the single point of support, all those things that make them more successful and leaves them room to make margin and to differentiate and add value to those solutions. So you talked before to, to Gary Garcia about vSpecs Labs. Partners will take these solutions, they'll differentiate by bringing in different software, different hardware offerings, and, and that's meaningful business for them. That means they can differentiate. So we get fantastic volume and fantastic traction from our partners because it's, it's more profitable and differentiated for them. Yeah. The actual, the actual value and value added, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, so, you know, Chad, you know, what, what have you seen change in the last year and you know, what, what, what opportunity, what, what, do you, what do you think we should be looking forward to through the rest of 2014 and out to 2015 as uh, the maturation of the solution set? Well, I, you know, I, unless you've been under a rock for the last year, right, you know that all of a sudden it's all about third platform, right? Software defined everything, third platform, scale out, uh, Really everything that EMC does right now is to, to make sure we're well positioned for that transition, right? You hear it from Joe right on down to a guy like me that needs to talk about third platform. So you know, you see us do more things that are software defined, like Viper, like Viper 2.0, which we talked about today, like the scale IO products for software defined block storage and lots of other things that are coming. So you're going to see us invest there from both a product and a solutions perspective. So, uh, yeah, Chad, you know, can you say the VSpecs team? You know, what 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 are you guys showing off at the show? Um, I, I, I here was that mobile solution, I believe, is part of part of what yeah. there. What what other uh, you know interesting things uh, does the VSpecs team have going on? So VSpecs is all over the show. We've got uh, presence in I think 17 different uh, spots around here in the partner lounge, out on the the show floor. Uh, where there's some really interesting stuff is in the Avnet booth. The Avnet has their, their mobile data center, data center solution. You may have seen this. This is a, a fully hardened, uh, powered mobile data center. It goes into disaster zones. It's fireproof, it's weatherproof. So if you need to stand up uh, a data center in a disaster area, you can basically roll this thing up in and turn it up and that's a, a VSpecs reference architecture. Um, they're also showing uh, live demos of the VNX E3200 and the Data Domain 2200. So those are live and functioning in the booth. You've got to go check those out. Uh, and there may be some solutions in there that might not yet be announced, but may be there might be in the booth. But might be in the booth. It's the so benefits I mean, of coming to the show, right? One of the benefits of being at the show, <laughs> but you won't have to wait long. So there are a few other things that are going to be coming tomorrow that are going to be pretty interesting. All right, all right, Chad. So uh, you know. Uh, last, last question I've got for you is, you know, let, let's take off your B-Specs hat and, sure. and you're looking around. What, what, what's getting you excited about the, the industry at this show in, in, in general from a technology standpoint? Uh, it's anything to do with, with third platform right now. It's, um, we're working more and more as V-Specs working with our colleagues at Pivotal. And now I'm, I'm being less exposed to our traditional mid-market applications, which yes, we know them, we love them, we might be a little bit used to them, but now we're looking at things like uh, Gemfire and Cloud Foundry and some of these new technologies that as a, a technology guy all my career, I'm really anxious to get engaged with and, and play with. That's very interesting to me right now. All right, hey, thanks so much, Chad. Always appreciate catching up with you. Uh, glad you could join us here on theCUBE. Or keep an eye out on what's happening on MVSpecs. And we will be right back with our next guest here from EMC World 2014. Thanks.